of humanity's sin was set free his love was audacious his sacrifice humble as he bore the price for sin and quenched hell's rumble the nails the thorns the mockery the scorn the agony the pain as night fell forlorn but in the midst of the chaos one truth was made known a truth that rings true for all eternity's flow his death brought liberty from sin's chains that bind a victory no other could ever hope to find oh what a love that could wash me clean from the stains of sin and shame that once had been what a blessed mystery he took my place that his punishment became my peace his grace so may i never boast for anything except the cross of jesus christ and the hope it brings may i not forget the blood he shed that it is by his death I am free instead. Amen. Sing this chorus with us. May I never boast.
but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? See nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, why don't you stand this morning, church? As we sing this. for your precious blood Jesus this morning thank you for that sacrifice and for the cross where everything changed forever thank you Jesus Love. 
Friday. It is a good Friday. Amen. We're going to take a moment now as a church. I think there's no better day than than today to take communion together as a family. So thank you, host team. We're going to pass the emblems. And I've got the emblems in my hand this morning. And perhaps you're new to church or you maybe you've seen the emblems before and you don't actually know what they represent. Well, as you get the emblems today, you'll see a little piece of um, biscuit and that represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. And the juice represents the blood that was shed for us. So we're going to take it in a moment. But before we do, I want to read to you this morning from Romans 5, starting at verse 6, and it says this. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Amen. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of the Son while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ made us friends of God. You know, this is the greatest act and will ever be the greatest act of love that we will ever experience in our lives. Jesus didn't just die for those who loved him and he did have some people that loved and followed him but love i love as we read this scripture it says that jesus loved those that hated him jesus loved those who betrayed him jesus loved those who denied him it says in here jesus loved his enemies he loved so much that he gave even to those who didn't love him what an incredible thought And that's why today isn't Solemn Friday. Today isn't Horrible Friday. Today isn't Dreadful Friday. Today isn't Heartbreak Friday. Today is Good Friday. It's a Good Friday today. You see, the cross wasn't the end of the story for Jesus. And this morning, as you look at your bread and the little um, biscuit and also the juice that's in your hand, I want to remind you today that it wasn't the end for Jesus and it's not the end for you either. Because of the resurrection power Jesus brings, Good Friday is only the beginning for us too. Isn't that an incredible thought? Because of Christ, which we sang before, we are children of God. Because of Christ, we are forgiven. Because of Christ, we are reconciled. Because of Christ, we can be joyful. Because of Christ, we are not shaken. Because of Christ, we are healed. Because of Christ, we are set free. Because of Christ, we are filling the blank this morning. Because of Christ, you are... Because of Christ, we are alive. So today, we're going to just take a moment now. We're going to take communion together. Let's just thank Him. Father, we just... We can't even begin to fathom Your love for us. It's easy for us to love others when they love us. But to love us when we've sinned and perhaps have denied you or perhaps have turned our backs on you, God, that is just such an act of love that we will never, ever be able to fathom. But we're just so thankful today. We're so grateful when we thank you, Lord, that this isn't the end, God. No matter what we're walking through right now, we know that there is a light and the light is you, Jesus. And today as we reflect on Good Friday, we thank you that this is just the beginning of the story, God. And we thank you for the victory that we have in you and remember your victory now. In Jesus' name. Why don't you eat and drink to remember Jesus this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. You didn't have to do it, 
but you did. And we thank you for that. We're just going to take a moment now to pray for a few needs I've got in my hand here. We're praying for a beautiful little boy who's part of our community who's actually down in Melbourne in hospital at the moment. He's already got quite a serious condition and has now been told that he's got leukaemia. So we're going to play, pray for Fletcher this morning. We're going to believe for a total miracle. I was chatting to his dad just yesterday and he goes, I know that God's already done incredible things in his life. So they've got faith to believe that God is going to heal him. So we're going to pray for him this morning. We're going to pray for somebody here who has um, needs healing for their right eye this morning. We're going to pray for someone who is in hospital, just had um, a heart, um, major heart surgery. We're going to pray for continued healing, but thank God that the surgery went well. We're going to pray for provision this morning. Maybe you have a need in this place this morning. What I'd love you to do is just for a moment, let's, let's outstretch our hands. Let's stretch our hands out in faith and let's pray. Father, we thank you. And as we look to your cross today, we remember, God, that by your stripes... We are healed, God. So if there's anyone in this place this morning that is in need of your healing, Father, we thank you that you've already gone to the cross, Lord. You've already done it. So this morning we speak your healing power over every single person who has any kind of sickness in their body, God. We speak healing right now over this person who needs healing for the eye, God. And we pray for total restoration. Lord, we pray for healing for Fletch this morning who is in his hospital bed. Father, we know what the doctors have said, God, but we know that you have a better word to speak over his life. So we speak healing over him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your provision for those that need your provision, God. We thank you that you are our provider, God. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you are our peace. You are our restorer, God. We commit all of these needs to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said together, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, why don't you say hello to someone just really briefly, just turn around, shake one hand and grab your seat. Welcome to everybody online. It is good to see you there. Why don't you take your seat? Now, I need to, um, who's feeling a need for coffee? Anyone? Put up your hand. Put up your hand if you need a coffee. Okay, focus, Fox, everyone. All right, some of you may have been horrified when you walked into church this morning and there was no coffee. Well, the good news is straight after the service this morning, not only are we having coffee, we're also having hot cross buns. So why don't you stay around for a few minutes, enjoy a hot cross bun, spend some time in the beautiful sunshine and um, meet some of the wonderful people in our church. We would love to meet you. If you are here for the very first time today, I'm actually going to be straight out the door on the right hand side after the service at our next steps desk. So come and introduce yourself to me. I've got a little pack, a welcome pack to give you and I would love to meet you this morning. So please come and say hello. We're going to take a moment just uh, quickly to consider our giving. And I know most people normally give on a Sunday, but we want to give an opportunity today for you to give. And as I've already said this morning, Good Friday is a day where we remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And I love this beautiful cross that we have here this morning. And it's a reminder that God gave His ultimate sacrifice for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. And in Mark 10, 45, it says this, Jesus says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give His life as a ransom for many. So as we reflect this morning on the sacrifice of God, for God so loved the world that He gave, I want us to also consider what we can do for the sake of others. I love as a church, we are able to be a giving church. I love as a church, we are a generous church. And even this week, you know, we are, we are constantly giving to people in need, whether it's inside our church community or outside of our community. And one of the ways that we do that is through the generous giving and obedience of the people in our church. So we're just going to take a moment now for you to be able to give and bring a sacrifice into the house. And we know that it's never going to compare to what God gave us, but I love that.
that we still get the opportunity to be able to give back to God and to His kingdom. So why don't, why don't we pray? Father, I thank You for each and every giver. I thank You that we can bring a sacrifice into this house, Lord. It doesn't compare to what You've done for us, Father, but we thank You that we can still give to You. And I pray today that um, whatever we give, God, it'll be used for Your glory, for Your kingdom. We thank you for the generous people of this church. We thank you for the obedience of the people of this church. And Father, I just pray right now that you bless each and every giver. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. Awesome. Well, I've just got a couple of things I want to talk about. Actually, under the seat there, Andrew, there are a couple of Easter eggs. I might get you to bring those up here. Sorry, they're not stuck together very well. Okay. Can you? hands here that's okay all right so the last few weeks we've just finished our grow course which was fabulous um i love it and i love hearing stories of people that have become very bold and have been stepping out and sharing their faith with the people around them and the last couple of weeks andrew and i have had a number of encounters with different people our neighbors our hairdressers random people and we've been able to invite them to our easter services and um, I also made a bunch of little gifts with an invite on them to give to people because I figure everyone likes an Easter egg, right? So I've got a spare one. I made a spare one. And I was wondering, and I want you to be really honest because we are in church. Is there someone here this morning who, if I give you this, it's got the invitation on it, it's all ribboned, ready to go. They have someone on their heart that doesn't normally come to church that you are going to invite to our Easter Sunday service. Put up your hand. Kerry, I'm going to give it to you. You've been coming to the Grow course as well and I know you've been really challenged with it. So, you know, let's be praying for Kerry even this week to have the boldness to invite that friend along. There are a few little cards left still out on the seat, uh, out on the table out there. Continue to put names up of people that you're believing to see one into the Kingdom of God. I love that we are... We're getting over there and praying for the people and we're really believing to see that people are going to come to know Jesus because that's what it's all about, right? So continue to do that. There's um, still name tags there you can put up on the wall. There's still, I think, about 40 of these left. It would be a real shame to have any of these left after today because there's no point after today. So why don't you grab them? I don't care if one person takes all of them. Like I just don't want to see any left because I'd rather see them in the hand of someone that doesn't know Jesus than sitting on our table here. So can I encourage you, take those. Um, and Easter Sunday is going to be a beautiful Sunday. Our team did an amazing job this morning. Thank you, guys, all of you. Um, don't worry about that. <laughs> and... Um, Easter Sunday is going to be no different. Actually, it's going to be more different because we have... Do you want to tell, tell us quickly, Lucy? Come and run up here. What have we got happening Easter Sunday? After the service on Easter Sunday, we have an Easter egg hunt. Woo! For all of the primary age children and under. Sorry. There will be eggs for the grown-ups and the teenagers. Um, so just quickly, the primary children will be out in the playground and the kindergarten and unders, so younger than two, can participate in a obstacle course, which we had so much fun yesterday setting up um, in the Dreamers room. So you will also receive little activity packs for the kids during the service. So it's going to be so much fun. Awesome. Thank you, Lucy. It is. I, I enjoyed setting that up with you yesterday. I think I'm going to have to have a go. I might get stuck in the tunnel, so maybe I won't. That's okay. Uh, the other thing on Easter Sunday, and we did this last year and it was absolutely beautiful, we are having water baptisms in the service. So if you have not been water baptised, can I encourage you, come and chat to myself, come and chat to Pastor Andrew or one of our team after the service. We would love you to be part of uh, that very special celebration this Sunday morning. So um, that would be amazing. The other thing that is happening straight after Easter, or actually just after the holiday, We've been doing a course called Disciple with our Connect groups and the feedback I've received is it has been fabulous. It's a great course for anyone who is new to faith or even just wants to know the foundations of faith and how to disciple other people. So we're going to be starting on a Sunday afternoon after church 
for new Christians or anyone that wants to know more about faith to come along to this straight after the service. So again, I will be out on the desk. You can come and talk to me about that this morning as well. And I think I've remembered everything. Why don't we just stand for a moment and um, we're going to honour the Word and we're going to honour Pastor Andrew as he comes to speak to us this morning. Happy Easter. Why don't we pray just a moment. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to come and worship in spirit and in truth on this Good Friday. We give you all the glory and all the praise that you deserve. Thank you so much for sending Jesus to be our Saviour, to restore that relationship that we can have with you again. We're so grateful. Amen. Amen. Why don't you take your seats. It's great to be with you today. Who's had too many hot cross buns already? Who had, okay, here's a, here's a little test. Who had a hot cross bun on Boxing Day? Yeah. I'm like, what is with that? There should be four, there should be rules around it. It used to be legislated that they could only be made for one day. Now, but I think we love them a little bit too much. They're especially... Especially delicious. But this is our Good Friday service, and it's a little bit shorter, it's a little bit different. Sunday um, is going to be a little bit more involved with baptisms. Um, there's still an opportunity for you, if you've never been baptized, to be able to come on, on uh, Resurrection Sunday. What a day! to get baptised, symbolising that we are dead to our sin, our old way, and coming alive again in Christ. I want to encourage you, if you haven't been baptised, once you think about that, you can speak to us straight after the service, and we'd love to help you. But this is the day, this Good Friday, it's a day that we remember and we commemorate the death of Jesus on a cross. This was considered the cruelest way to die, the cruelest of all punishments. And Jesus willingly went to the cross for our sins. He willingly took that upon himself. But that wasn't the worst part of it. And it wasn't the hardest part of it. The hardest part was actually taking the weight of our sin upon his shoulders to go to that cross. If you're new or visiting today, big warm welcome to you. Um, but we've just completed a series on the passion of the Christ over a couple of weeks in the lead up to Easter. You see, in the book of Mark, Jesus makes a prediction three times of the passions of the Christ. The prediction was is that he was going to be mocked. He was going to be beaten. He was going to be tortured. He was going to be crucified and killed. And that on the third day, he would rise again. And he repeats this in, in, in chapter 8 in chapter 9 and in chapter 10. And you think, well, why did Jesus have to repeat himself so much is because, well, sometimes we need to learn how to listen the first time. But he understands our human condition. And it was the same with the disciples. He had to keep putting this in front of them until they could actually accept it. You know, they would think you know, the disciples just didn't understand. They didn't understand what he was talking about. Why are you talking about this? What's going on? And they were thinking that their Messiah or their Saviour was the one who was going to liberate them from the Roman occupation, but instead Jesus had a different kind of freedom in store for them. That's going to read through today, and it's going to be a lengthy passage of Scripture, but it's the story of the crucifixion from the book of Mark. It's fitting that we've been in the book of Mark for the past couple of weeks, so we're going to continue with that. So I want you to maybe open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 15 and uh, there's not going to be any up on the screen today, but we want you to follow along with this story as best you can. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests had a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away to be delivered and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him and said, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you got no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. And now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in the prison, 
who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man named Barabbas. I want you to remember that name, Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests had stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate answered to them and said, What shall I do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, having scourged Jesus or whipped him, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail the King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him and they led him out to crucify him. And as they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him mixed wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may all see and believe. And those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry And breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome, and who... And when he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were, many, uh, there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph, Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And and he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. So we have here this story. This beautifully described story of the lead up to and the death and the burial of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. And we see a number of different pictures throughout this, but what did this death really accomplish? We can ask ourselves, was it worth it? Was it worthwhile? What did it actually achieve? 
And I think there's three things, and maybe there's a lot more things, but just three things that I can pick up out of this particular story that Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. And the first one is that because of Christ, I am healed. You know, Jesus paid the ultimate price for our wholeness. He didn't just go to the cross for our salvation, which is the true healing. He went for our temporary healing as well, our healing that is here on earth, not just in eternity. It says in Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 5, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and upon him was the punishment that brought us peace. By his wounds we are healed. You know, when we look at the cross... We, we actually see this symbol of our healing. It says in, in the Old Testament that there was this moment in Israel when they had disobeyed God and sinned and they had rejected his rule and wanted to go off in their own direction and they were sent among them a whole bunch of snakes. Who here likes snakes? I only like those jelly kind of ones that are in the packet, Allen's lollies. They're really good. But these kind of snakes were the kind of snakes that would bite you and they caused people to get sick and die. And it was a plague among the nation of Israel because of their disobedience. They had turned their back on God and they had gone in a different direction and they had to suffer the consequences. And the Bible teaches us that the wages of sin is death, right? So this cross, what happened was God told Moses to actually said, I want you to grab a, uh, an image of a serpent and I want you to hang it up on, the, on, this, on, a, on a bronze pole and I want you to raise it up and anybody else who would look at that would be saved from their sickness and they would be healed. And it's the same picture. It's a type or a picture in the Bible of us actually looking at the cross. So we don't just look at the cross for our salvation. We look at the cross for our healing and we can hold on to that. The second thing is, is that because of Christ, I am free. I wanted you to remember that name Barabbas. See, Barabbas was a criminal. He was a murderer. He was part of the insurrection and rose up against the Roman army. He was put into prison and he was going to be sentenced to die for his crimes. So what happens? He's standing there. Pilate's about to release one of them. He's got Jesus on one side. He's got Barabbas on the other side. And the chief priests are stirring up the crowd saying, Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. We don't want Jesus. We want Barabbas. Release this criminal to us. And through this whole process of Jesus coming and being condemned to be crucified, Barabbas is set free to go. Who's Barabbas? I'm Barabbas. In the midst of all of this turmoil, my sin, my consequences of everything that I have done and everything that I am is now free. I have freedom. I, as death brought us liberty. I love that song that we're singing because of Christ. His death brought liberty. His death brought liberty. See, Jesus paid the price for our crimes and now we are set free. His punishment, my freedom. We are Barabbas. The Bible teaches us that who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? And the third thing, as I come to a close, is that because of Christ, I am alive. That's the whole theme of our Easter is this year is we've been talking about this for the last couple of months. Because of Christ, I am alive. Because of Christ, I am alive. Let's lead, look in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 7. But God, who loves it when the scripture starts off with but God? We were going one way. We were falling into our sin. We had no way out. But God. 
He is the restoration. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, we weren't just in prison. We weren't just sick. We were dead. In our trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And He raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Throughout Scripture it designs, it defines sin as being so far separated from God that it is like being dead. Is you're not just distant, you're not just afar off, it's dead. And not just a little bit dead. Right? So if you think about Lazarus for a second, in the Jewish culture, if, if someone died, it was still a possibility that they, it was potential that they, they might be able to come back to life after three days. That was in the, in the, in the culture. Three days. Three days is a good day for a resurrection. But how long did Jesus take to get to Lazarus? He took four days. He was all the way gone. He was all the way dead. And Jesus still said, Lazarus, come forth. But we talk about sin as being separated from God, this death, this curtain, this veil that separates us from God's presence. And the Bible talks about it in the book of Mark when we were just reading it in that particular passage of Scripture, that in the temple there was this giant curtain, a veil. Now there's a little bit of history around this and there's a lot of conjecture about how thick it was or how heavy it was or how tall it was or how wide it was. But the, the legend goes that it was actually, according to the culture, the legend was is that the curtain itself was as thick as your hand, as thick as a man's hand. Now that's a heavy curtain, but it was also really high and really wide. And they said that horses that were attached to it couldn't pull it apart. And it took up to 300 of the attending Levites to actually clean it to actually immerse it and clean it, 300. Now, you can imagine if it took 300 people to pick this curtain up to be able to clean it, to be able to open it, to be able to get through. It's a heavy, heavy curtain. And what happened is that when Jesus breathed His last, in other accounts, as He said these words, it is finished. What happened was the sky was dark. Apparently there's an earthquake. But the temple curtain was ripped from top to bottom in two, which signifies for us that the thing that separated us from the presence of God has now been opened up and we have free access into Him. The veil was torn and we have access to God through the cross, through that act of Jesus dying, laying down His life in our place. And this is what it says in John 3.16. You could probably quote it. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. How do we get made alive? If, we, if we're thinking about this, going, Pastor Andrew, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit dead today. I, I'm feeling or maybe a lot dead today. I feel separated from Jesus. How do I get to be made alive? Because it says the Bible made us, Jesus made us alive in Him when He went to the cross and died in our place and now we are made alive in Christ. But how do I get to be made alive? It's in the book of Romans. Five simple verses that will lead you on this pathway. It's an understanding that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We are in a bad state. Without Jesus... We are sinners. And Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus our Lord. It says that, But God showed His love for us that while we were still sinners, that Christ died for us. 
And the way to accept this free gift of Jesus says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And how is this for an awesome promise from the Word of God? It says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Why don't we stand to our feet? I don't know where your heart is at this morning. I don't know if you would call yourself a Christian. I don't know if you'd call yourself a believer or maybe a regular churchgoer. I don't know each and every person who's in this place today. But I know that this is the way that you get to be made alive, is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And I can think of no better day to do that than Good Friday, acknowledging the day that Jesus died on the cross. Why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes. If there's anybody here today who wants to accept and receive Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, who wants to confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, why don't you slip up your hand right across this place. I'll see it. You can put it down. If there's anybody here who wants to say, yes, I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and my Saviour today. Let's wait a moment. Awesome. So good. Thank you, Jesus. All right, well, let's say this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for going to the cross in my place. Thank you that you paid the price for my sin, that through your death I now have life. I now have freedom. I now have wholeness. And Jesus, I'm sorry. For all of my mistakes, please forgive my sin and take away my shame. I want to follow you for all of my days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If that was you here this morning and maybe you prayed that prayer for the very first time, or maybe you've prayed it before, but you're going, you know what, my heart was separated from God and I needed to come back to Him. We would love to be able to give you a gift. There's um, going to be a team at the door on the way out with just some Bibles. All you need to do is approach them and say, hey, I prayed that prayer. Can I get one of those free Bibles? And we'd love to be able to bless you with that. But church, it's a great day to celebrate. Good Friday is a day that there is no other day like it, where we actually remember that Jesus died on the cruelest of devices, a rugged cross made for torture and it would just be so absolutely I can't even describe the amount of pain that you'd be in this implement of death used by the Romans that we see here on the stage this laid in a tomb sealed with a rock and we can think about that on Friday and we can think, you know, oh, it's actually a down day. It's a day where we've got to be reflective. But I'm telling you right now, it's a moment for rejoicing because we know that Sunday is coming. We know that it's just around the corner, that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. He didn't stay dead, that He arose again, that He defeated hell and death. And now we can live in victory. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to celebrate be uplifted with caffeine and calories. All hot cross buns that are consumed on Good Friday are calorie free. They will not add to your waistline at all. So we're confessing that in the name of Jesus. But hey, can I bless you? Can I pray for you as we, as we go today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Happy Good Friday, everybody. And we will see you on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. <laughs>